perhaps a shorter sermon. And there's communion as well. Our New Testament reading is 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 12. 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 12. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed His love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world, that we might live through Him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and His love is made complete in us. This is the Word of God to God's people. All praise we bring to God in every dominion of His reign. Just bow your heads for a moment and reflect on both passages that we heard. Amen. An English girl named Elizabeth Barrett had a spinal injury that left her disabled for the rest of her life. She was confined to her room, but her extraordinary gift of writing poems brought many admirers to her, and one of them was Robert Browning, and he convinced her that her disability should never keep her from living life to the fullest. They fell in love. But this was against her father's wishes. And they loved to Italy and they married. And it was a love that a man and a woman had for one another. That was something really to write about. And in her immortal sonnets of the Portuguese, which she wrote for her husband, she expressed the love that she had for him. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways I love thee to the depth, the breadth, the height. My soul can reach when feeding out of sight from the ends of being an ideal grace. There were many expressions of love from human hearts for people that we felt compassionate about and that we still feel compassionate about in the history of mankind. But friends, there is no love, expression of love that can stand up to that which David expressed in Psalm 116 Verse 1, I love the Lord. It was a love above any other kind of love that we can ever think about. It was like David wanted to cry out, I love people. But the love that I have in my heart for God is so much bigger, so much greater. There is no love like this love. And on Thanksgiving Sunday, 
we pause and we think about our love and our thanks to God. And it's really on this Sunday and over this weekend that we think more about it. Each day should be a day of thanksgiving, as you all know, but especially on this day, we think about the reasons more why we love our God. And you know, there's another psalm, another verse in the psalms that would come to mind and it's like a melody that would just play in our heads over and over again. Psalm 118 verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His love endures forever. And we have to think that we have goodness in us but we can't be good all the time. God is good all the time. And I just think now of the series, God's Not Dead, the film series, God's Not Dead, and a pastor and his friend always said, God is good all the time, all the time God is good. And then we have to think of God's love. God's love was and is a perfect love. We can sometimes fail by showing love, but God's love is always permanent always perfect. And we think then of God to be good and God to be love. What would you say would bring gratitude to your heart in this moment? If you could stand here and you could say what you are very grateful for, what would that be? I think most people in our nation would say over the Thanksgiving weekend, I'm grateful for my family. What can be greater than to gather your family around your dinner table? That we feel so blessed to be loved and that we feel blessed that we can give love. Some people would say that they are grateful to live in a free and prosperous country like Canada. This past Wednesday when we had our Zoom Bible study, a few of our members expressed the gratitude to God for good health. And you have your own reasons. You have your own thoughts. And the list would just get longer and longer and longer of why we want to say, I love God because. And then we give all these reasons. But I think with David, we want to exclaim what we read here in Psalm 116, verse 1. I love the Lord. We have our reasons. And David expressed some thoughts why he loved the Lord. What brought the thought to his heart and to his mind of why he loved the Lord. And first he want to share a reality. And that is that God hears us when we cry out to him. He had the confidence to go to God any time, without hesitation, to go to God in prayer. Why? Because God heard his prayers. God heard when he cried out to him. And you know, when we go to the Hebrew text and we meditate on the word hear, or heard in this case, we have to think that it's to have the full attention of people. When we talk to them, they respond. There's a full attention. There's no undivided attention that we receive from them. And you see, that's what David wanted to say about God. God is really always giving full attention to our prayers when we cry out to Him. And I think we have to agree that in the time that we live in our world today, we don't always get the undivided attention of people. Have you ever had a conversation with, to, with someone and then you got that sense, well, there's something else waiting. Just get to the point, I need to move on. That would be the sense when we deal with people. And I think we all can be guilty of that. 
But God is not like that. When we pray to God, God listens. And you know, there are people who would say, I just don't agree with that. I just don't think that's true. Because I've been praying to God for a long time and God hasn't answered my prayers. But then we should think about it. The reality in our lives as Christians is that God always hears us. It's just God's own business of how and when He would respond to our prayers. We cannot rush God. We have to be patient. We have to pray without ceasing. We always have to cry out to God. We cannot stop and say, well, it just will not help if I pray any longer, if I cry out to God any longer. No, we always, without ceasing, have to pray and God will hear us. And in His time and in His way, God will answer our prayers. David had only God to cry out to. And God saved him from desperate situations in his life. We all know the history of David. We all know how he fled from the rage of Saul. And then his own son Absalom wanted to take his life. And God delivered him. God protected him. And then being a shepherd, he's been in very life-threatening situations. And God literally rescued him from the claws and the jaws of wild animals. I think if David stood here this morning, he would have said to us, Pray. God listens. God will hear always when you pray. If there's someone that you need to talk to, if there's someone that you want to turn to just to share some of your thoughts, some of your heart's desires, let that person always be God. But you know, friends, there was a more permanent reason for David to be thankful for in his life. And why he said, I love the Lord. And that is the fact that God saved him from death. We read here in verse 8a, But you, Lord, have delivered me from death. And I think you all will agree with me that David had more in mind the things that I just mentioned. All the life-threatening situations in his life. Those things that easily could have taken his life, ended his life, and God delivered him from those situations. That's why he cried out, For you, Lord, have delivered me from death. To us, it reaches far further. It reaches to a place called the skull or Golgotha. And that's why we have to think, why we celebrate communion. There at Golgotha, God placed His Son on the altar. And there Jesus died for us. There Jesus gave His last breath. There Jesus said, it is finished. I accomplished the mission for my Father. I saved people from eternal condemnation. And death. And therefore, we can rejoice in the words of Romans 8, verse 1 There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You see, this is the greatest reason on Thanksgiving Sunday why we can come and say, I love God, because Jesus died for my sins. That's the deepest and the greatest reason why we can say, I love the Lord. You know, people might not have all the provisions in their lives and all the privileges that they can measure up to other people. But the gift of salvation would all make us equal in the eyes of God. It is a gift of God to all people. And I want to share with you something I read about a seer in an ancient kingdom 
who came to the core of the king and said, I know that the richest man in the kingdom will die tonight. And the king thought, well, that can only be me because I have all these treasures. I'm the richest in the kingdom. And he called doctors and advisors. He wanted to take care of business if. And he thought that it was inevitable that he would die that night. And the next morning, he woke. Well, the little sleep he had through the night, he woke. And he had that seer summoned. And he said, there will be punishment for you. But then someone came into the palace and said, Majesty, the beggar by the city gate, the one who always prayed, the one who always spoke about God, he died last night. He was the richest person in the kingdom. You see, we can just rejoice that that is the wonderful blessing that we have, that we can thank God for the gift of salvation in His Son, Jesus Christ. And that we can come to this table and that we can think of these elements at the table. When we take the bread, that we can think that the perfect Lamb of God was broken for us and only He could bring salvation because He was the Lamb without blemish, without fault. And then innocent blood, his blood was shed for a complete forgiveness of all of our sins. You know, we can think of so many reasons why we rejoice over the Thanksgiving weekend. But this is the ultimate gift that we can come and that we can take part, that you brought your own elements and that we can partake together. And that we all can exclaim, I love God because He heard my cries. I love God because He saved me from death. Thanksgiving, as I already said, is a wonderful day. It's a wonderful weekend, the Thanksgiving weekend. But friends, always remember, each day of our lives should be a day of gratitude, a day of thanksgiving, because of all the blessings that God bestows upon us. May God bless you in this time and beyond. Happy Thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. For the right reason, in God, happy Thanksgiving. Amen.